Hey boys, so did you get that? Okay. So, now you see spinocerebellar tract, is it going on the same side or opposite side? Same, same side. side, okay. Final relationship, final relationship is on the same side, okay. Now you see, other one. So it is passing through one area of your brain called inferior cerebellar peduncle, you will do it in anatomy and then it goes like this. So posterior tract is passing like that. Now we are talking about the anterior tract. Okay? I don't know if you see the color. Do, do you see the color? Okay, it's black color but it's becoming dark. Okay, see, this one. Is it, is it, is it on the opposite side or the same side? Well, what is happening? Same side? Okay, all right. I think you did not get the correct idea for the anterior spinal cerebellar tract, not very perfectly, okay? You saw that, but not very clearly understood to everyone, okay? Anterior spinal cerebral tract enters from one side, okay? All right? And it synapses, then it crosses over to the opposite side at this level, okay? Crosses over to the opposite side, then it goes up and enters the superior peduncle and through the superior peduncle it passes again to this side of the cerebellum from which side did it start look at the loop like this synapse going to the opposite side going up on the opposite side but finally at the cerebellum level again coming back to the side now look at the connection same side of the body and same cerebellum control yes or no yes. okay so this tract is tawil a little complicated but making a loop actually but again going to the same side isn't it so the control which is coming it is coming to the same side then formation is coming so can you say that now cerebellum is having an ipsilateral control or it receives ipsilateral sensations yes or no okay this is how we deal with anterior and posterior spinal cerebellar pathways okay we don't ask you about all these anatomical details that through which peduncle it is passing, why it is crossing on the opposite side. Final word is ipsilateral control. Bas, khalas, that's it, okay? This is what you need to remember and you need to understand. Is that all right? Okay. I don't think it's complicated. You got it? Okay. Pain temperature, simple touch pathway. These pathways are very simple, classic pathways, which you understand. Basic system. Starting, entering into the spinal cord. Okay. All right. After entering into the spinal cord, usually the pathways don't synapse. You have to synapse, okay? The synapse usually, okay, occurs after, after you go few segments up or few segments down. You know, the fibers, when they enter into the spinal cord, it is not lazim that they will synapse at the same level. They can synapse at the same level, but some fibers go one segment up and then they synapse after that, after crossing over, okay? They go one segment down and then they pass and then they synapse like this, okay? So keep this in mind. When the fibers enter into the spinal cord, they can go a little up, they can go a little down, they can go at the same level and cross and then after they will synapse, okay? It is not zaruri that they will synapse as they enter into the spinal cord, okay? If it's up, it's sure. Look at that. Look at the picture. They are synapsing here. They will not synapse after the crossing motors. They will synapse on the same side. Okay? But level of synapse is not the same. It is not necessary. Maybe one, two segments up, maybe one, two segments down, maybe the same segment DNA. Okay? Is that clear? Now look. After that, crossing over, after crossing over, they will ascend. They will ascend. It's pain, temperature, and simple touch pathway. Look at the word. It means what are you talking about? 
spinothalamic system complete system yani both pathways lateral and anterior is that clear all right they are going up all right lateral and anterior both and you will up 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 and they are forming what i talked about the spinal meniscus did we it was not maktoub abdul rahim asked about that and we mentioned that spinal meniscus is maujood it is not written here but it is a meniscus okay all right and then finally it's going to the yes the word coming here is vpl i did not talk about this vpl because you don't know about vpl you don't know about thalamus thalamus is a majmua of nuclei so many nuclei the most important nucleus in the thalamus one nucleus which is most important for receiving all the fibers <clears throat> of the body from all the lower part of the body upper part of the body all the fibers they pass through one very special nucleus it's called vpl what do you call it v p l what is the meaning of v p l ventral posterior lateral okay v p l ventral posterior lateral position this v p l nucleus is the makan of definite synapse third order neurons maujood here okay so all the fibers will have to stop here and synapse and the new fibers will pass up v p l is covering all the body i am not talking about the head region i am talking about all the body okay vpl vpl is responsible for all even for the dorsal column system and for the spinothalamic system all the systems which are going up the main station the major station of the thalamus the most important station remember one word and that is vpl okay vpl is for the body okay when i say the body i am not including head okay head sensations they are also entering and they also go to the thalamus they will go to vpm there is another small nucleus maujood medially vpm okay so vpl for the body and vpm for head these two together they form a complex okay vpl plus vpm they are forming a complex and that complex is called ventro basal complex ventro basal complex so in one word i will say ventro basal complex is receiving all sensations of the body in the thalamus ventro basal complex when i say ventro basal complex you will think of two things okay vpl and vpm yeah any together ventro basal complex are we clear about that vpl plus vpm is equal to ventro basal complex okay so it's passing through vpl alas and it's easy pathway alas this is done okay from face now from the face region head you are passing in the same way you are going inside okay we are, we'll we'll not really talk about these pathways in your exam because you have not done the trigeminal nuclei and in detail really so we don't usually ask but since the brain stem has been done okay so i expect you to understand this also you are entering into the nucleus of the fifth cranial nerve in the brain stem okay and from there you see there is another nucleus spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve a longitudinal nucleus which is there synapse will happen in these nuclei and the fibers will pass after crossing over and they are going up and they are going up and they form a lemniscus called the trigeminal lemniscus did we talk about this lemniscus also i said for the trigeminal nerve you will have another lemniscus and that is called the trigeminal lemniscus okay so trigeminal lemniscus is taking and this information is going to the vpm can you see the word vpm because it's coming from the face it is not vpl and now you will go up and finally reach the cortex in this way we complete the pain sensations okay now very quickly i'll give you a brief word on the descending tracts please okay any question about ascending system which is not clear to you any problem yes dear Hmm? in both 
both okay trigeminal nerve has multiple nuclei it's a complex of nuclei okay the spinal nucleus mesencephalic nucleus so some parts of the nuclei are motor in nature and some parts of the nuclei are sensory in nature okay so the relapse or, or the relay is occurring in multiple nuclei okay spinal nucleus is the main nucleus which is receiving it's a longitudinal nucleus stretching from the upper part of the cervical region of spinal cord into the brain stem medulla and pons it is going up okay mesencephalic nucleus is mainly present in the midbrain area okay so in this way so you have to consider that the uh, synapse is occurring in the nuclei but the main sensory nucleus is the uh, spinal nucleus which is happening so the fibers sometimes go down as you saw they go down and synapse a different level and then they go up again like this but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter really okay so all you need to have yeah spinal cerebellar spinal cerebellar tract okay it's not reaching your higher level it means subconscious in the subconscious the most important thing that you have learned is your proprioception sense of position coming from your muscles inside of muscles and your tendons and ligaments okay and telling cerebellum about all the details of your muscle contraction and relaxation and stretching of the tendons and ligaments and everything this unconscious proprioception is going by spino cerebellar tracts okay any other question about the ascending system done no problem it's only a superficial overview i have not given you the details but at least you understand the basic principles now that how crossing over occurs what will happen in the damage also okay descending tracts please okay the descending system now motor system okay i'm sure you have done the names of these tracts in the brain stem or in some areas because when you are doing the brain stem sections you have talked about different levels really okay and all these are present pyramidal and extra pyramidal first of all term pyramid what is pyramid by the way first of all pyramid yeah yeah true in terms of our language we say pyramids one word is ihram comes in mind okay or a typical triangular structure comes in mind okay due to which we call it pyramid no i am talking about your neurology i am talking about your area of the brain when i say give me this pyramid in the brain so what will be your answer medulla okay medulla that's fine so very good identification medulla medulla has anterior surface or anterior part or the posterior part first you have anterior then anterior part has the upper part or the lower part so here upper part. upper part okay so the pyramids are present okay in the upper parts of the medulla the solen parts here like this these are the pyramids here okay and on the sides of pyramids you have the olives zaitun shaped okay swelling so pyramids and olive all these structures terms are used for the upper part of the medulla and the anterior surface okay <coughs> now the upper part the medial upper part of the medulla is bulging forward okay and it has a typical shape okay like this this one and it is giving you a triangle an inverted triangle like this that's why we call it pyramid this has this special swelling over the surface of the pyramid is formed by a special phenomenon what is that phenomenon why you have done it in anatomy what is there if you cut the pyramid or if you are having a section at the level of the pyramid what do you see in the pyramid actually why do you call it pyramid and what is the pyramid because of the shape okay that area has a typical shape you call it pyramid but when you cut it what is there inside the pyramid facial nerve hold on medulla facial nerve and medulla facial nerve has something to do with the the yeah pons area maybe you can see the emerging of the facial nerve or the facial nerve is close by but facial nerve is not coming out from the pyramid it's not even 
coming out from the side of the pyramid okay from the side some nerves are coming out the cranial nerves but it's not the facial nerve that is coming out no okay no something else I'm, I want to see the structure you know when you see the cut section what is there in the pyramid what is it made up of tracks very good answer tracks now tracks you know white Meta bundle tracks are going descending tracks or ascending tracks sensory or motor first of all descending or the motor because we did not study any sensory tract passing through the pyramid we discussed all the tracks did we talk about pyramid La? no okay the tracks were passing through the medulla they were going to the nucleus cuneatus and gracilis and they are also part of the lemniscae were passing but inside the brain stem this pyramid is on the surface it's satha really okay it's a surface where you are having and it is formed by a special tract shabab if a special descending tracks two descending tracks are coming same they are coming anteriorly like this okay and they are going straight and this is the anterior surface and these tracks are going straight like this okay and they go straight will you see any change over the surface no okay now look at my hand if the two tracks are coming up from the brain here they are on the anterior in the anterior region like this and if the track goes like this anteriorly bulge and then they go back like this and then they again enter in the lower part do you see any prominence or bulge over the surface so it means the track they are pushed anteriorly they change their direction and they form a swelling over the surface it means the straight tracks which are coming now they make like this if they are making a little bulge or a convexity well if you cut that area you see khalas, these tracks are mojood and they are forming like a convex pathway these tracks because they are forming the pyramid the name of these tracks should be pyramidal tracts okay so those tracts which are mojood or those fibers which are mojood in the pyramid area if you cut are known as the pyramidal tract or the pyramidal fibers descending tracts coming from the brain coming from the cerebral cortex okay coming from the cerebral cortex motor areas all right extra pyramidal tracts all other descending tracts there are many kathir number of descending tracts okay starting from midbrain starting from pons starting from different parts of medulla okay from different areas and they are going down into the spinal cord in different parts they are also descending tracts but they are not passing through the bulge of the pyramid okay in the bulge of the pyramid only wahid fakat one is present and that is pyramidal tract so all those tracts which are not passing through the pyramid are known as the majmua of all those tracts will be known as these are qadim terms but we still use it pyramidal and extra pyramidal now look pyramidal tracts look at the name cortico spinal what is the meaning of the word cortico spinal from starting from the motor area of the cortex frontal lobe and they are going down and they are going to different parts of the spinal cord the name is simple cortico spinal what is the second name which is written here cortico nuclear okay also called cortico bulbar bulbar region is the medullary region mainly of the brain stem cortico nuclear well when you say nuclei in the brain stem which nuclei come first in your mind cranial nerve nuclei the motor nuclei of the cranial nerve which are controlling face and other areas of the head and neck isn't it cranial nerve nuclei vagus nuclei the facial nerve nuclei the trigeminal nucleus and there is glossopharyngeal nucleus okay accessory nerve nucleus many nuclei are mojood they are all cranial nerve nuclei mojood in the midbrain pons and medulla isn't it okay corticonuclear tracts they are coming from cortex and they are controlling what cranial nerve nuclei and then the cranial nerve nuclei are controlling the muscles all right did you get that okay now hold on in the motor system i'll use two terms please upper motor neurons and the lower motor neurons 
all right upper and the lower motor neurons please be careful be careful upper motor neurons okay are the controlling neurons which control the lower motor neurons in the nervous system okay <laughs> upper motor neurons are some higher level neurons usually present in the brain specifically khususan in the motor cortex khususan in the motor cortex they are present okay and they are controlling some lower neurons which are maujood mumkin in the lower part of the brain or mumkin in the spinal cord so be careful in your explanation when you say upper motor neuron you say oh these are the highest level neurons motor neurons which are controlling the other motor neurons okay and these other neurons mumkin they are located in the brain somewhere at the lower level or they are spinal cord two levels are there okay so upper are controlling the lower lower are not controlling the upper upper are controlling the lower upper motor neuron okay so if a motor neuron okay is present maujood in the cortex motor cortex and it is coming it is sending the fiber and this fiber is passing and passing tawil fiber and this fiber is going down and controlling the anterior horn cells anterior horn cells of the spinal cord anterior horn cells alpha motor neurons and the gamma motor neurons maujood here okay if it is controlling that will you call this one as the upper motor neuron yes or no if this one the cortex neuron as the upper motor neuron will you call these spinal cord neurons as the lower motor neurons yes or no yes this is upper and this is lower all right khalas okay hold on i'll give you another example if a motor neuron of the brain motor area motor cortex is coming down in the brain stem and it is controlling the motor neuron of the cranial nerve nuclei motor nerve of the cranial nerve nuclei motor neuron okay so is this the upper motor neuron and the cranial nerve nucleus neuron is the lower motor neuron okay and then cranial nerve nucleus neuron is controlling the muscle outside did you see it's a two point relationship so i gave you two examples from brain to brain i give you example from higher brain to lower brain okay second example from higher brain to the spinal cord clear upper and lower motor neuron now i'll give you third example there are some motor neurons which are maujood in the brain stem okay in some areas in the gray matter not in the cranial nerve nuclei some other part of the gray matter of the brain stem in mumkin in the medulla mumkin in the pons mumkin in the mid brain gray matter the neurons are present these neurons are sending the fibers down and these fibers are coming into the spinal cord and these fibers are connected with the anterior horn yani alpha and gamma motor neurons so in this case which is the upper motor neuron and which is the lower motor neuron your brain stem neurons are the upper motor neurons and your spinal cord neurons lower motor neurons i gave you the third situation also so are you clear about situations now what is your idea about the definition of the upper motor neuron upper motor neurons are only maujood in the cerebral cortex no they are maujood generally in the brain yes okay they are most commonly specifically present in the motor cortex yes okay but it's a possibility that they are also present in the brain stem okay the upper motor neurons control the lower motor neurons always yes or no yes. the lower motor neurons control the muscles yes. or the final effector organs sa okay the upper motor neurons can control the lower motor neurons in the brain also yes or no yes. the upper motor neurons by sending long fibers can control the spinal cord motor neurons yes or no okay is that clear the brain stem motor neurons can control the spinal cord motor neurons in this case the brain stem motor neurons are the upper motor neurons sa and the spinal cord motor neurons are the spinal uh, uh, the lower motor neurons are only found in the spinal cord hold it Re revisit and say lower motor neurons are only found in the spinal cord no thank you very much now you have got the clear concept abdurahim 
Can the spinal neuron be an upper neuron? Well, another good question. If one higher segments of the spinal cord, okay, are sending some fibers to the lower segments, okay, in that case, in that case, this connection is not classically regarded as the upper and lower motor, but according to the level, okay, level. Technically speaking, you can call it according to the position, but we don't use this term basically. Okay? We use three situations for application. From higher brain to lower brain, from higher brain to spinal cord, or from the brain stem to the spinal cord. But from spinal cord to spinal cord, it is also mumkin. Okay? It is possibility. But in our neurology, we don't describe the control as the upper to lower control like this. But according to position, anatomically, yes. Okay? Anatomically, yes. But in terms of function and control, no, we don't consider like this. The spinal neurons are always lower neurons considered, okay? If they are considered, they cannot be upper neurons usually, functionally when we talk about, okay? Functionally speaking, yes, okay? So I think the concept is clear. Now look at the names of the extra pyramidal tracts very quickly. What are the names? Then I'll give you the functions very quickly. Rubro spinal. What do you mean by rubro? Rubro. Rubro. Have you ever heard this term rubro? No, you must. I think you must have. Have you done inflammation in general pathology? Inflammation in general pathology. Have you or have you not? You have. Maybe it's an old time, once upon a time, okay? Long, long ago. Everything forgotten, I believe that. But still, you have done it, isn't it? Inflammation. Classical signs of inflammation. Classical signs of... I, I'll give you four signs and then you tell me. Ruber, tumor, calor and dolor. Okay? Ruber, tumor, calor and dolor. Number one, you'll guess it, okay? Ruber means? Red, okay? Tumor means? Ma swelling. Tumor is swelling. Tumor is swelling, generally. <laughs> it's not malignancy or a benign tumor. Any swelling is a word, Latin word, tumor. Hamal is a tumor. Isn't it? Physiologically, isn't it? It's swelling, okay? So, ruber, tumor, calor, calor, calor. Hot. Inflammation, look at inflammation, it is red, area is red, it's swollen, it is hot, okay? Dolor, pain, the fourth one is pain, okay? So, ruber, tumor, calor and dolor, the other names, you know that, okay? Anyway, now, rubro means what? Red. What is red in this area, in the brain stem? Now, you got it, red nucleus. So, the tract is starting from? Red nucleus, okay? <coughs> and it's going to the? Alas. You got the meaning? From red nucleus to the spinal cord, okay? Second one. Tecto. You know tecto, come on. Okay, we done it. Now it's opposite track. Min tecto, ila, spinal cord, okay? It's from two. It's easy. Simple. From reticular formation, different areas of reticular formation, fibers are starting and they're going down the spinal cord. You know it. Just opposite names. And names are so easy that there is no problem in it. Okay? Alright. Very quickly. Now, summarizing the functions of these tracts. Okay? Now, be careful. Maybe the functions are not written here in the presentation. Okay? But these are very, very important to be described. Without which you will not have... I'll give you the pathway also. Okay? Look at the pathway. First. Corticospinal. Now, you have the idea. Corticospinal tracts are starting from... And they will go to different levels of spinal cord. Look at this one, please. Please follow me, all of you. Okay? Upper motor neuron, starting neuron here. Cortex. Okay? Different parts of the cortex. Alright? Motor areas and also from sensory area. Very, very. It's strange. We'll do it later, inshallah, in detail. But it's starting from different parts of the motor cortex, frontal lobe and also from the parietal lobe and a sensory area. Anyway, the tract comes down. Look at the tract. It is starting from so many areas, broad area. Then the tract has to form a bundle, one bundle. Sir. It cannot go like this. 
If it is starting from this big area, it has to become like this. So that you hold this tract really, isn't it? Okay? Like you're holding something. So it's forming like this. And you see, oh, upper part is open. This open part is called the radiations. Okay? Radiating part. Okay? After that, it passes through a...